Rahman Rahim, dear audience everywhere, I greet you with peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is a new episode, but it is a continuation of our previous topic, which is high expectations. Uh, we ended up by giving a good explanation, and we understood it, and we uh, understood that how important it is uh, in our job and the whole school from the principal to the janitor, our main job is to raise the level of expectations in order to encourage students to get higher standards, inshallah, and higher grades. Now, I want from each one of you, uh, this is a, an easier task than before, to think of your students, one level, that one grade that you teach. Uh, you tell me that they are in grade 10 and they are doing this. When they graduate from grade 10, they do this. And you think that they can do this. And this can be very obvious, very simple in Quran, for example, in memorization or understanding. And you can try to apply it to a subject that you teach, whether it's English or math or anything. Can you take a minute, think of this, and give me this? It's very simple now. Uh, my students are doing this at the end of the grade, at the end of this year. They are doing this. I think that they can do better. For example, I know that my children finished 10 chapters of the Quran or 10 juzes of the Quran and I see that some of them are doing better. So that means that I expect them to do uh, 12 juz from the Quran. Okay? So is this example clear? Okay. Should I start getting answers from you? Very simple task. My students are doing this. I think they can do this. But be realistic. You know your students. Okay. Good, let's begin. Subject is English public speaking. Subject is English public speaking. And you the are students biased are from to English public speaking. And the great uh, students are from grade seven. Grade seven. Alhamdulillah, now at present, they can give an impromptu speech of not less than five minutes. Five minutes now. So they can speak up to five minutes. Inshallah. Okay, good. Now, maybe I hope that by the coming year, when they finish with the standard eighth, that is grade 8, they will inshallah be able to prepare no, no, speeches. No, 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 no. Next year when you teach grade 7, you expect them to speak for 7 minutes or 10 minutes. 7 level, not, not, not when they move to grade 8. So next year you are going to teach another grade 7, let's say. You think that they can teach, right? They can speak for 10 minutes. Now they are talking for 5 minutes. Do you yes. think that they can speak for 7 minutes? Inshallah. Of course, so the new generation, I'm saying. You can do that. Inshallah. And it, okay. Is anyone teaching the same level and can object to this and can say, this is too much? If you're teaching the same level, tell me yes. No, we make sure that the topic that which we assign is known to the students, even whether it be faintly. So you give them some topics that they are familiar with, right? Because if you give them something new, I think th there is a big danger. Do you want to comment? Yes, exactly. Uh, I agree with brother that we do give them the topic which they are aware of. However, but again, because once when the child comes to speak, but naturally he is blank, he or she is blank. But the moment he begins to speak, automatically they start getting some ideas. Yeah, as long as the topic is familiar exactly. to them. Exactly. So we, uh, then we just stop them wherever we need. Okay. Now, if you're telling me that they can speak for five minutes, and they can speak for seven minutes. And the sister said they need some practice. And practice requires time. How are you going to get this time? I want all of you to think of this. This, this is a problem now. We, we need to solve this problem. You, they are doing five minutes now, right? You expect them next year, right, the same level, would be able to speak seven minutes. 
right? And how would you get, and she said that they need some time to train. How are you going to get this time? How can we get some time that's not apparent to us? Huh? During the course of the academic year? Yeah. While we are taking the regular classes? Okay. Maybe then we ask uh, the target students to time and again often come on the stage and deliver the speeches? You're going to take from other subjects? Think of it. I remember you had mentioned something about the paragraph, which was cut up into small pieces, so we can change our teaching so, techniques. Aha! Uh -huh. This is what I was expecting to have. You change the teaching methodology that you're using in order to get more students can speak. And instead of just one student can speak at one time and everybody is listening, you can use the technique that each student can talk to another student. So now they are getting more practice, right? At the same time. It's at the same time, but all the students or half the students are speaking. Very good. The key word here is you use some methods that would help you use time effectively. When we talked about the using different methods, right? This is for using time effectively. You know that method A works better than method B and in less time, that's why you use this. Did you get the point now? Now we solve the problem. The same students can do better next year if we use better methods of teaching. This is very good. I'm pleased with this. Now you started to have, alhamdulillah. Good, what else? Give me another example. We got this very clear example about English, public speaking in English. Okay, example from here. Uh, this is grade six, English language. English language. Currently when I was uh, teaching poetry to the children, I expected them to analyze the poem. There is color poems that you teach them. And uh, the varied, varied kinds of color poems and sample reading was done. Children on their own had brought in some couplets written by them. Good. So inshallah in the coming year I can expect and target that the entire class should be able to come up with such poems. The same question would be applicable to you. How would you do this in the same amount of time? Uh, same thing again by improving my methodology of teaching. How would you improve it? As in, I would have to provide them with more samples of such poems, wherein good. they get an idea how the poets use this language. That's good. This is simple. I can say that you are learning. You are learning. Yesterday, you, you were not able to give me specific answers like this. Now you are giving me these. So I can see that you are learning. When you move from here to here, you can see that you are learning. Okay, good. I have a comment here. I remember... Yeah, I'm very interested in teaching poetry and, uh, and uh, many teachers really find that they don't encourage even sixth grade students to, to write poems, to, to write parts, stanzas or something like this. This is very good. In the Arab world, unfortunately, they don't do that. I remember also one good exercise, which may not help directly, but this is related to poetry because I have no place in my presentation here about poetry. One good thing for analytical thinking is that before the students study a poem, they read the biography of the author, of the poet. And when they read it, try to ask students in groups to come up with a theory, a theory. Based on our information on this poet, from what we have read, I expect, or we as a group, small group, expect that the poem will talk about this and this and this and would have this element of sadness or this element of happiness or he would be using harsh words because based on the theory that you have got some information about him that he lived a harsh life so you may expect make a theory that he will use harsh language he will not use a soft language other people would say something different so based on the information that we read about this person, can you expect something that he will do in his poem? It's a theory. It may be right or may be wrong. We train them. Yes. You analyze it and you see it, and then we'll see at the end. Okay. When we read the poem and they understand them, who expected the poet to write this type of language? One group would say, yes, we expected this. How did you get this theory? Say that from these lines from his biography, because in his biography, do you think that this would be a good exercise? Very good analytical exercise. 
You analyze something to expect something that may happen. It may work, it may not work. But after some time, yes, you will modify your theories in another point. Yeah, I think this is a good time to take a break and we'll come back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hush little baby, breathing so calm. Let's come under the shade of the scholars. So the issue is a problem of knowledge. Asim al-Hakim. Why do people do bid'ah? Imam Malik said, whoever claims there is a good innovation in the deen. Salim al-Amri. He is accusing that Prophet Muhammad did not convey the message. Dr. Mamduh Muhammad. If you know that the Prophet ﷺ did something and I do something else, you have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Don't follow me. Abdul Rahim Makati. But if each one believes his goal is to please Allah, to follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Abdul Rahim Green. I think this really is to do with your internal state. Where does the Quran and Sunnah point to? Muhammad al Sharif. They have to follow what Allah and his messenger said. Let's imbibe from these scholars the fruitful solutions for the problems of the world. Which one we would take and which one we would leave? Question to every Muslim. To every Muslim. In the shade of the scholars, every Wednesday and Friday at 11.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 12.30 a.m. UAE on Peace TV. He faces... He listens. My question is about the beard. About Imam Mahdi. What are the people believe in? He answers. So number one is the help of Allah. He satisfies in the light of glorious Quran and authentic Hadith. If Allah helps you, believe me, you have to get success. Catch Dr. Zakir. <laughs> To get convincing and valid answers in Dial Dr. Zakir today at 7 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 8 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Yusuf Estes. It's your duty to give the message to your people. The Messiah to connect with God. Islam is the only true religion. Hussein Yi. There is none worthy to worship except Allah alone. The missile to correct your actions. Teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the guidance from Allah. Abdul Rahim Green. Islam is something we have to practice and we have to implement in our lives. The missile for a righteous character. Every day they worship Allah. In their obedience to Allah and His Messenger. He's not like anything and He is unique. Watch these visionaries of Islam with a vision to attain world peace in Peace Missile, next on Peace TV. Hush little baby, breathing so calm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I hope you've had a nice break. Let's continue our talk. Now I think that we are learning something new. And, and this tells you something that if the students succeed to make a theory, I'm quite sure that among all these students, some of them would come up with something that would, we will find it in the text of the poem itself. If they are doing this, you can be proud to say that they are learning. Because just last week, they didn't do this and now they are doing this. This is the learning. If the students are doing the same thing, and they repeated, repeated, repeated the same thing. For example, the sisters say that I asked them to write two couplets or something, right? And they are doing this through the whole year. Are they learning? They are standing in the same place. I expect progression to happen. Do you see what I'm saying? You can say proudly, in the beginning of the year, they were doing two lines of poetry, right? And now at the end of the year, they are doing three or four or five. This is where they were, and now they are here. You can see the clear progression. Is this okay? So whether they are doing the same thing, but they are improving in it, either they're improving the quality of speaking, right, or they're adding more lines, right, or they learned something new, they are making a theory. Do you see what I'm saying now? The three things here. Either they move from one thing to another thing, 
right? Or either they improve the quality, or either they do something that they did not do before. Three things that you can judge that the students are learning. So when somebody says that, are your students learning? Yes. How are they learning? You can give me these examples. Progression, right? Improving quality, doing things that they were not doing. And this applies to any subject matter. I hope this is clear. Good. Jazakumullah khair. Yes. Any other example? Yes. Uh, this is also concerning public speaking. Public speaking. Yes, but uh, this time it is would it be... One day all the Indians will be public speaking. Huh? Inshallah. Okay. But it is... If all of them are public speaking, they're going to speak to whom? Think of to it. To the world. Think of to the world. Okay. So you, you're thinking of invading the whole world? <laughs> Inshallah. By satellites. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so this is about prepared speeches. Sometimes we do find that the students, when they're given a topic to prepare a speech, they just by heart the entire speech and they just say whatever that they have by hearted. But how we can improve the students is that I would like to tell the students that whatever that you are going to give a speech on, I as well as the students from the class will be asking you a specific number of questions after you have finished the speech. Okay. So that the student is coerced into not only learning it, but also understanding the concept what is explained in his prepared speech okay. so that he is better prepared to answer the questions. Okay. The second benefit would be that the students in the class would be more attentive to what he's speaking because they have to ask questions. And as the year progresses, we can increase the number of questions that are asked to the person so that it improves the quality of his analyzing and his concepts building skills. Okay. Now I would ask you, since we are, a lot of you are talking about public speaking, I would ask you a question. Tell me, write to me, five criteria that you are looking for in a public speech for your students, okay? Depending on the grade. I expect each of you, if you want to work individually, that's fine. If you want to work in pairs, it's up to you. What do you expect? How do you evaluate a good public speech? What do you want to see there to judge that it is a good public speech? You want to give it outstanding. You want to give it excellent. What do you expect the speaker to do? Can you, on a, on a separate slide, can you write some of what they're going to say? The reason behind this, or the rationale behind this, is that I hope that uh, not each one of you evaluates the public speech based on his own wishes and his own criteria. And because this would be unfair, if you are judging the students in your class based on some criteria and your neighboring teacher is judging them based on another criteria. I know the kind of answers that you are going to say. I have high expectations. <laughs> okay, let's hear. Okay, did you write five? Tell me five. If you wrote five, tell me five. Yes, Pierre. I'll begin with the teachers of public speaking. Okay. The first thing is good memorization of the speeches. Good memorization of the speech, okay? The second would be the confidence. The confidence, the way he delivers speech, yes. confidence, okay? Third would be his spoken English. Okay. Has he improved in his English too? Because it's the subject English public okay. speaking. And the fourth would be a good flow of speech, smooth. Okay, smooth, okay? And then the other techniques are many, like voice modulation, okay, voice holding modulation. the attention good. of the hold audience. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We need five only, okay. You can tell that you are a good public speaker, okay. Now, let's go to the first one. Say it again. Good memorization. Good memorization of the speech. Who amongst you uses the same thing? Okay, and the rest don't. And the rest don't, right? Okay, if this raises the question, really, why do you expect him to memorize his speech? Tell me the answer. If the student has not learned his speech well, automatically all the techniques that which I spoke about after the good memorization are going to come down. Like for example, his flow of speech, if his memorization is not good, then he's going to falter, he's going to stutter in between. Who for example, the, the confidence. Who was the best speaker in the world? Question for you. Now at present? I'm asking you. Who is the best speaker in the world? It yes. will depend. Ha ha, you're dreaming, huh? I thought that you, you love Prophet Muhammad وسلم, more than Dr. Zakir Naik. I love the Prophet وسلم, more than Dr. Zakir Naik. 
Yes, the Prophet ﷺ was the best speaker in the world. And then you, you were hesitant, you didn't answer the question right. Anyway, you are in trouble, huh? Okay. <laughs> so, do you think that the Prophet ﷺ memorized his speeches? Allah made him learn the speeches. Yeah, but some of them is not, by the way. This is in the Qur'an. Allah made him memorize the Qur'an, but not in the speeches, by the way. So I want you to think of how important to reevaluate the criteria that we are using. I'm not saying they are bad. I'm not saying that they are good, but we need to review them. Some of them, why do we need? I would say that in the speech, I would check the degree of memorization of Quran and Hadith but not the exact speech because memorizing the speech itself this is my opinion you can say that I don't like that uh, it does not open the door for creativity when I present this workshop today like this don't expect me that next week when I present it I'll present it in the same way I would never do it the same thing you open the floor for creativity but what you need to test is the degree of memorization of ayat and the degree of memorization of hadith, not the speech. This is my opinion. Who agrees to my opinion? Oh, wow, I got the majority now. Depends, depends on the grade that which you're teaching, yeah. Sheikh. Yeah, I think this is an opinion. It, don't, don't take, it is an opinion. Some people would say that, no, you would memorize it. Yeah, some people would say that if you can do it, even the presidents of the world, all of them, they read it. Because, just an element here, when you memorize it, it takes some time. The question here is, can you use this time that had been used in memorization in something more beneficial? Yes. The answer is very clearly yes. I could have used the same time, yes, in learning or teaching them how to memorize Quran or Hadith or to do something else. I would say this answer from me. Yes, I need, I need some fights Sheikh, here. I, need, I would comment on this. Yes. As I have heard, I don't remember the scholar's name, yeah. that once he was invited to give a speech on the stage. Yes. And he just went up on the stage and he was dumbstruck. He didn't know what to say. And then he was just, just for a few minutes, he was just quiet. And then he comes up saying, okay, I hope all of you have had food or something else. Please go and have food. That's it. And he just, mashallah, he's a scholar. Okay. So maybe he was be well-versed with the surahs and the hadith. So how does this... Yeah, uh, this, this is, is, I think this is a very good argument. One thing in, in response to this, I say that scholars are not necessarily good speakers. It's not their job to speak well. The best scholars that we have seen, by the way, even if they were, just died recently, they were not a good speaker. Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, Allah yirhamuna, was one of the main scholars, right? But he could not speak very well. He is not articulate. A scholar does not mean that he is a speaker. A speaker is something else. That's why you find a huge organization in the world, they appoint one speaker. It's, he's not the president of, the, he's not the CEO of the company, right? But there is someone who is a speaker who can speak well. It's not necessary that. Yeah. So this is, this is a, yes, please I'm speak sorry, up. but I would like to just give no, one more comment. Hot. I want this. I, I'm sorry, but I would like no, to just no, give one need, more comment. No, we need this. That mashallah, you have the scholar who's got the hadiths and the verses, which you are saying that, they should memorize more of the verses. Yeah. And I'm over here to train this particular scholar to be one of the speakers, which, as you said, are, most of them are not speakers. So, inshallah, my job is to train them to be a speaker. That's the only thing which okay, I'm doing. to train them to be speakers. But should they memorize the question that we raised in the beginning? Should they memorize the exact speech? Should I repeat the same speech that Ibn Taymiyyah made uh, 800 years ago? I can do that. But I think when I do this, yes, although it sounds very good for me, right, it doesn't sound good for the audience because the audience are different. He was writing for people who were living at that time. I am speaking to the people who are living in this time, who are totally different from the people who lived 800 years ago. Do you see my point? Please, let's hear other points. This situation, I was hoping to get it even yesterday, but it came today, alhamdulillah. I would like to elaborate on the part of memorization. What we mean by memorization is not mugging up the exact speech with ifs and the and buts, with everything. Maybe that may be the case for nursery or KG. But when we speak on a higher level, maybe standard 7, 10 and further on, maybe a scholar as well. So what we mean by memorization is that he is well versed with the matter.
so that he does not go there and become blank. He knows what he's going to speak. Although he's not memorized it 100%, he's not mugged it up. Like, for example, I would say that, mashallah, you are conducting, you have not memorized or you have not mugged it up. But you know what you're going to go and say. You have prepared it. You, you know that what you will be teaching us. Okay. The points. Of so course, this is what we mean of by memorization. I should know what I'm yes, exactly. talking about. But I didn't memorize my text before I came. Even I forget to say one statement. I think it's enjoyable. We want to continue. But it is, the time is over. Hoping to see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Little baby, pure and small, he created you, he created us all. Hush, little baby, don't you fear, we're never alone when Allah's so near. Hush, little baby, breathing so calm, he'll protect us all and keep us from harm. Hush, little baby, still and serene. You are a Muslim, Islam's your deen. Hush, little baby, pure and small. He created you. Give thanks to Allah for the moon and the stars. Praise Him all day for what is and what was. Take hold of your Iman. Don't give in to Shaitan. Oh, you who believe this, give thanks to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Rahim. Allahu Yuhibbul Muhsinin. Wa Khaliquna. Wa Raziquna. Wa Huwa Ana Kulli Shayin Qadir. Allah is Akbar. Allah is Rahim. Allah is the one who loves the Muhsinin. He is a creator, he is a sustainer, and he is the one who has power over all. MashaAllah. Thank you. I am Zikra Naik. My name is Rustan Naik. You are the best of people.